In today's video, we're going to take a look at a very interesting way of demodulating FM using a pulse counting FM discriminator. Now, unlike the traditional uh, FM ratio detector or Foster Seeley discriminator, the pulse counting FM discriminator doesn't require any tuned circuits. Now, the name pulse counting FM discriminator is a little misleading because we're not really counting pulses as much as integrating them. So here's how the pulse counting FM discriminator works. Uh, the discriminator generates a narrow fixed width pulse at the FM uh, carrier or the IF frequency, uh, typically at the zero crossing. So, so here's an example where each time we're crossing up through zero, we generate a narrow little pulse. Okay. Now, because the, the width of this pulse is fixed, as the carrier frequency changes, the duty cycle on the pulse changes. So therefore, the, if we average this voltage over time, this, vo this one will have a lower average voltage, this will have a higher average voltage. So now the average voltage of this uh, pulse train, or the duty cycle of the pulse train, changes depending on the deviation of the carrier frequency. So therefore, the average of this voltage is essentially going to be the baseband, or in our case, you know, the audio. So when the uh, carrier frequency is low, we've got fewer pulses, the average is lower. When the carrier frequency increases, we've got more pulses, and because these pulses, again, are all fixed width, the average voltage here is higher. Now the pulses can be, you know, positive pulses like I've shown in this drawing here, or negative going pulses. It really doesn't matter, as long as the pulse width is fixed and it's tied to the carrier. You can generate pulses on every zero crossing, say going up and going down, going up and going down, or the way I've drawn it here just on the positive going zero crossings. It really doesn't matter, the technique will work either way. Let's take a look at a few more details of the pulse counting FM demodulator application. Now we almost always require a down conversion from the original carrier frequency down to a lower frequency IF uh, for uh, using this detector. Now why is that? Well, the peak-to-peak -peak frequency deviation uh, of an FM signal is typically much, much, much smaller than the carrier frequency. Therefore, the duty cycle variation of the pulse train is going to be very, very small. So for example, if we had a carrier frequency of 100 megahertz, like uh, near in the FM broadcast band, a frequency deviation of plus or minus 50 kilohertz, that means that the carrier frequency is going to vary between 99.95 megahertz to 100.05 megahertz, a very, very small deviation. Let's uh, take a look at that on the scope and I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So for our illustration purposes, I've got a uh, 100 megahertz carrier here that's being sinusoidally modulated at just one hertz and uh, with a plus or minus 50 kilohertz deviation. And we can actually, I did that intentionally so we can just literally watch and see how that uh, carrier is varying here in the frequency domain. Pretty easy to see, you know, we've got a, just a span here of one megahertz, so it's pretty easy to see that variation. But let's see what would happen if we tried to use the uh, pulse counting technique on this. It helps to look at it now in the time domain. So here's that uh, 100 megahertz carrier, uh, looking at it in the time domain on the oscilloscope. And if I turn the modulation off and turn it back on again, you literally can't see it. I mean, the, the variation is such a small portion of that carrier frequency that even though we know this frequency is varying back and forth plus or minus 50 kilohertz at about a one hertz rate, we simply can't see it. And of course, since we can't really see it, the duty cycle variation would also be very, very small. So therefore, the detected response out of the pulse counting detector would be extremely small and unusable. So we really need to down convert the signal. So now when we down convert the signal, the carrier frequency will be reduced. We'll essentially just shift the carrier down in frequency, but the deviation remains the same. So how does this help the situation? Well, now the peak-to-peak -peak frequency deviation is going to be a much larger portion of that now IF frequency. So for example, if we down convert it from 100 megahertz down to 100 kilohertz, the deviation will still be the same plus or minus 50k. So now, instead of the frequency varying this very small amount with respect to the carrier frequency, in this case the frequency is going to vary from, say, 50 kilohertz to 150 kilohertz. That's a 3 to 1 variation in that frequency, very, very easy to see and observe, and therefore this pulse counting technique will work really well. Let's take a look at that on the scope. 
Now to do the down conversion, I'm just using a simple uh, diode ring mixer. I've got a video on that uh, we can point you to. Uh, we're just going to put our LO frequency in. In this case, I'm going to just be offset by 100 kilohertz from my FM signal that I'm putting in here. And we'll take this IF output, uh, which will now show a much larger proportional variation of that duty cycle with respect to the carrier deviation. So now I've got my frequency modulated carrier coming into the RF port of the mixer here. I've got another signal generator generating a 100.1 uh, kilohertz uh, local oscillator signal coming in here and then we're taking our IF output here. Well, let's take a look at this over on the scope. So here's the output of the LO of the mixer. Well I'm cheating a little bit. Remember a mixer is going to produce both the sum and difference frequencies of the RF input and the LO. So my RF input is at 100 meg, my LO is at 100.1 megahertz. So I'm going to create an output at 100 kilohertz like I see here, but there's also an output signal at uh, 200.1 megahertz. Why don't I see that? Well, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm uh, low-pass filtering the signal by uh, taking the bandwidth of the channel down to 20 megahertz, so that 200 megahertz signal is eliminated. If I go up to the full bandwidth, I can essentially see all of that on there, do a single shot, and we can actually see that I've got this fuzzy 100 kilohertz signal. This is actually a 200 megahertz uh, signal riding on top of that. But uh, typically in a receiver, you're going to uh, be filtering away the unwanted uh, image. So that's essentially what I'm just doing with the scope here to show that effect. So now let's turn the modulation back on again. So that, again, this is a 1 hertz modulation with a plus or minus 50 kilohertz deviation. Well, it's now where we couldn't really see that deviation at all when looking at the original 100 megahertz carrier. Now that we've down converted to 100 kilohertz, it's very, very easy to see that that deviation is a very large variation with respect to the frequency of the IF. This will be very easy to detect. Now the circuit I'm using is a simple two transistor circuit here that embodies something I call a, a dirty benchtop engineering, where I simply pick up parts, a couple of uh, NPN transistors, some resistors and capacitors that will kind of do the function I want, but without putting a whole lot of thought into carefully designing each little block. The circuit I put together uh, looks like this. Uh, we're taking our IF output from uh, our mixer into a simple gain block, a little common emitter amplifier. And uh, the reason for that is uh, with most uh, FM receivers, you want the signal that you're detecting to be limited or go into limiting, which means amplified to the point where the, you know, it doesn't look like a sine wave anymore and it looks more like a square wave. And what that does is it makes the detector immune to any amplitude variations of the RF signal. So I've got a fairly high output coming from my mixer, so I'm just using one simple single gain block here. In uh, a real receiver, you'd have much more gain to go into a limiter. So that's just a very simple AC-coupled common emitter amplifier. The output of that goes into this very simple, uh, we call a monostable uh, pulse generator. So the way this works is that uh, as this collector voltage rises up, this capacitor gets charged up you know, through that diode generates a voltage across it. When this collector voltage then falls, then the, the, this voltage here falls down below ground and actually momentarily turns on this transistor which yanks down you know, on this 3.9K uh, resistor and creates a little negative going pulse here. And then once that capacitor discharges, this transistor turns off again and the cycle repeats itself. So we wind up creating a, a negative going pulse here each time the collector voltage falls during the falling edge of the carrier. And of course that's an inverting amplifier so it's the rising edge of the carrier coming in. And then there's a simple low pass filter that will go essentially into our audio amplifier later on here. But let's go take a look at what this looks like. So with the modulation turned off again, uh, here is the output of our simple monostable pulse generator. So each time our carrier essentially crosses through zero, we generate a short little ne uh, negative going pulse. We turn the modulation back on again. We can now see how that uh, the pulse, whose basic whose width is basically fixed, is now varying along with our IF frequency. So the average voltage of this is raising and lowering uh, with the deviation of the uh, IF signal. And a couple of just more practical tips uh, for this pulse counting FM demodulator is that um, the IF frequency is going to have to be greater than the peak deviation, right? Because if you've got a carrier and its deviation is going down and up, you want to be sure that when you go down, you don't go down to DC, 
So uh, therefore the IF frequency has to be at least greater than the peak deviation and typically about uh, two or three or four times uh, the peak deviation of your signal. Now of course the lower the IF frequency the larger the baseband output so the lower you can make that IF the bigger response you're going to get out of the uh, pulse counting detector but you've got to be sure you don't go too low because you might run into this problem. The higher IF frequencies are easier to filter, right? It's easier to filter out something that's, you know, 500 kilohertz, a megahertz, or something like that, you know, from an audio signal, but then you're going to get a smaller response. So the, there's always a trade-off between what the carrier frequency is or the IF frequency is uh, versus your deviation. Uh, so this is just some practical tips when you go to design uh, with one of these pulse counting demodulators. So now in order to actually listen to the demodulated audio, uh, we're going to take the output of the pulse generator and we need to average it. Now it could go through a, a low pass filter and that's fine, but uh, I'm taking another shortcut here on the bench. I'm just coupling through a 10k resistor, a little bit of stray capacitance on the board, but that's going into this little audio amp. Now, of course this audio amp doesn't have uh, the bandwidth to respond to the 100 kilohertz signal that's there. So it's essentially, just because of its bandwidth limitations, it's going to filter that signal or average it, uh, low pass filter it, and, re and the result just give me essentially the baseband audio output. So it's forming the function of that uh, low pass filter. So we take our uh, modulation or baseband frequency from 1 hertz to say, oh, say 500 hertz. We can actually now hear that tone being demodulated very clearly. As we increase that modulation rate, it actually works quite well. Now the fidelity of this pulse counting demodulator uh, actually is quite good. Uh, my signal generator has got a little bit of an audio loop in it that I can uh, then uh, use to frequency modulate the carrier. So let's turn that on. Now the fidelity of that is actually quite good uh, considering that uh, it's just a simple two transistor circuit that's actually doing the uh, creating the pulses and doing the demodulation. So a real simple technique, very interesting stuff. Now of course if you were going to build a real uh, FM receiver, it would uh, a couple more blocks in here to just kind of detail that out a little bit. You'd have some kind of an RF front end here with your antenna, uh, maybe some tuned amplifiers to give you enough signal to come into the first mixer. Then you'd have your local oscillator as we discussed already and with our example down here. Um, and then that's again going to produce um, the sum and difference frequencies. You, the LO can be above or below the FM input signal, so you could have, uh, it doesn't really matter, it'll work equally well uh, either way, so you can uh, either get the carrier minus LO or the LO minus the carrier, doing either high side or low side injection. And then you'd uh, employ some filtering to select the image that you want, which would be this difference image and not the sum image. Then you'd go into an IF amp and limiter to essentially square up that signal then use that to drive our little, the little monostable one-shot here. Again, you can do a, a better design than what I did here, but that's all that is. And then low-pass filter that to eliminate the uh, high-frequency content, uh, the, the 100 kilohertz or 200 kilohertz content, if you will, of your, uh, your IF, and then go into an audio amp. So that's typically how it would work. Now, uh, I'll put a link uh, down below to uh, a fellow engineer and amateur radio operator, uh, Alan Yates, uh, VK2ZAY. He actually has a, a really nice uh, blog entry on a complete FM broadcast receiver that's done with nothing but uh, a handful of uh, NPN and PMP transistors and a couple of JFETs and a diode or two and resistors and capacitors. Uh, really, really nifty little design. And I, I lifted some of what I did uh, here uh, from his larger schematic for the complete FM receiver. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the pulse counting FM demodulator circuit. A really simple circuit that can produce some pretty high fidelity uh, FM demodulation. Be sure to check out the link in the video description down below for Alan Yates's blog uh, for his uh, broadcast FM receiver that uses this technique. Uh, my show notes will appear in a link down below as well as always. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you're a subscriber, please be sure to click the bell down below the video to get notifications whenever I post a new video. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.